Hi, my name is Stephanie and I run a business called Wardrobe Angel. It's my job to transform people's love of the fashion industry into wearable, workable wardrobes. Over the next few weeks on Fashion House, we're going to be going behind the scenes of the fashion industry. We've got some interviews with the most amazing industry insiders. We're going to be looking at the trends that you need to get your hands on right now. And also, we're going behind the scenes of a glamorous fashion magazine shoot. Welcome to Fashion House. I'm editor and founder of Lardydell magazine and today we've been doing a fashion fabulous uh, shoot at Newton Hall so we're showcasing the best SS16 looks and looking at high society occasions like going to the races or fabulous parties and just trying to provide a little inspiration for our readers really. I get an email from Lardy Dar, I know it's going to be good. <laughs> so naturally the brief comes through, it's like five pages long. Um, but I just love the sort of randomness of it. It's always just like Alice in Wonderland, Ascot, you know, and it's just it's a bunch of words shoved into one, but it just it lets your brain sort of go around in circles and try and figure out exactly what she has in her head. But I think me and, me and Linda have very similar ideas. could either be words. Um, people like Vivian Westwood just works on words. So they don't give you visual pictures, they'll give you words. And then other designers will work visually, so they'll give you um, a mood board, so a different collection of inspirations. But it could be leaves, it could be flowers, it could be a bird, it could be any kind of inspiration. Um, so I'll get to see those, and then basically I have to create the makeup from the concept of the mood board. Um, so then we could figure out what eyeshadow to use. And um, so for like today, the idea is that I wanted to keep the makeup based on spring summer 2016, which is all about shimmer, strobing, dewiness. It's all about the shine, um, but not like a wet shine, like a, a shimmery kind of metallic-y, mermaid-y sort of shine. Um, because I want to keep the makeup quite neutral so it doesn't overshadow the clothes. Um, so that's kind of where the inspiration has come from. And I'm a huge fan of Tim Walker as a photographer um, and his kind of concept of slightly ethereal um, models. <laughs> Linda have uh, very similar brains and very similar ideas and I think we have similar tastes in photography so generally she gives me a few words and I know exactly what she's looking for. Uh, one time she said uh, masks, masks and suits and I went brilliant, very Tim Walker-esque and I was like you know that's totally my sort of style. With the shoot uh, the brief I was given was basically Alice in Wonderland, very fantasy themed but a bit of ascot and a bit of 19 sort of like a bit vintage really so it had these long ball gowns with that sort of ball gowny feel so the Newton Hall obviously fitted so well with that like it, it was just amazing all put together and obviously bring the horse in and it's just it is just like a fantasy world and it's always it's always brilliant every time I do shoots for da because they're always like that um, the, the machine or dress, that, that was a really great shot. Um, it was quite a funny shot really because I had to sort of, she was lying on the bed wearing this eye mask and obviously this gorgeous machine or top. And uh, I was sort of stood over her, <laughs> trying to balance while leaning over to try and photograph her. Ended up working out really well. Um, but we had the light coming in from the side, from the window, and it was just meant to be like that she'd just come in and just slouch back to relax. Um, so that was a really great shot, but um, the model did fantastic, like she really just fell into it brilliantly.
the big trends for Spring Summer 2016, obviously I was lucky to do all the shows. So the big trend is all about the skin. It seriously is how you can make the skin. I'm gonna call it cashmere. How you can make it look like silk. How can you make it look like satin. It has a particular sheen. Um, it's all about strobing, which is effectively the new version of highlighting. But there's less contouring. It's all a little bit softer. Again, so there's not so many hard angles on the face. Um, so it's all about capturing the light on the cheekbones, the nose, the chin, keeper's bow on the lip. And it's just generally um, producing that. The other key look is um, strong eyelashes. Now the eyelashes could be quite sort of spidery looking. Uh, they could be colored mascara. Uh, copper blue, you know, turquoise blue is quite strong for spring summer as well. And then the sort of the cherry bee stung lips again are quite strong. But it's all about the skin. This season is all about the skin. You know, it's really important to make the skin look expensive, you know, just amazing. Beautiful models start from the age of early as 15, 16 years old. Their skin has a particular kind of like youthful juice. So for a slightly older lady, I'll kind of use myself as an example. So anybody from sort of 40s upwards um, would have to be careful where they place some of the shimmer and some of the glitter because you don't want to enhance the sort of the fine lines the deep wrinkles, the kind of tiredness that you have, you sort of lose that sort of dewiness when you get older. So you've got to be just careful of where you're not so heavy handed and kind of cut out the sort of really heavy glitter. You can still wear blue mascara, you can still wear rosy cheeks, you can still wear, you know, a red lipstick, but it's just actually knowing which textures to use. That's the most important person when you get older. It's all about texture. So where you used to wear your, uh, your blush are quite high up the cheekbone, you wouldn't do that so much when you get older. You would force it further down the face um, to make the face look softer, so it's not so kind of hard. Um, that's what you would do for somebody kind of 40s onwards, possibly, that sort of age. Usually around summertime, we throw in horses and dogs. It, it's something that we love to do. Last year we did a shoot where we referenced a 1920 Vogue cover and we had a pug in a tutu. And this year we had a fabulous uh, horse uh, owned by Newton Hall and a whippet and a couple of puppies. And the, the reason we love doing this at summer is because a lot of people go to the races, a lot of people go to really fabulous summer parties and wear hats and it's a great excuse to dress up. So for us, we can use really beautiful dresses, some great looks on the gents, and some really sort of wow, show-stopping hats. And by marrying it with the horse as well, and with the backdrop of a Georgian building, it just looks so elegant. Fun. We always manage to make it work and I've got the best team in the world. I've got a fabulous creative can-do team who really like a challenge so I can throw anything at them and they'll make it work and I'm really blessed that way. And the great thing with the horses and the dogs is that we know that the finished result is going to look so stunning and it's going to make people stop and stare and, and fall in love with the fashion and the clothes. And it gives them an experience when they open the pages and see such beautiful animals and such beautiful settings. It gives them a feeling of pure joy and that's what magazines should be about. So it's worth, it's worth the effort, I have to say. Um, and the people that handle the horses and dogs are always fabulous to work with, so they make our life a lot easier. Part two, we've got the latest catwalk trends that are coming to a high street near you. And we go inside the wardrobe of an amazing woman who is addicted to a handbag or two. My ultimate favourite, well my ultimate, ultimate favourite has to be this <gasps> bag here. Oh, that's so beautiful. 